take time to be holy. Speak up with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy. Be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt soon be fitted for service aboard. Amen. I want us to take this song. Itana, itana life. Itana. the Lord in prayer. It's eternal life we want to live. And there's one thing to have the salvation of your soul. It's eternal life you want to live with God forever. Close your eyes and be praying my dear. It's eternal life we want to live. Oh God, save my soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for the privilege to preach the gospel of eternal life to your people. And that gospel leads to the salvation of the souls of men. You have brought us down to this place that we might preach this gospel of eternal life. Lord, be in our meeting today. And the word that is coming out, let the word, as it is said, be the Lord. For the word is God. And I'm praying the word will communicate eternal life. To those that hear it in Jesus name. Amen. That the salvation of the souls of these people. Their righteousness and holiness will be achieved through your word. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm talking to you on the broad and the narrow way before you. The broad and the narrow way before you. But before I go on in my sermon, I need to make a formal introduction of my person and of the ministry the Lord has given unto me. I am Pastor Paul Rica. Just as you have been told, the International Director of Holiness Revival Ministry Worldwide, also known as Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide, with headquarters in Abuja, Nigeria. And this is non-denominational. We, that is to say, we don't have a Sunday worship like this, no. We operate in chapter meetings all over the world. And this ministry is breaking through to all the states uh, that we have. You can find representative of our ministry. And the ministry also has gone to outside the country. And the Lord is turning people in mass to salvation, holiness, and eternal life. So, we, the Lord opens the door to us from place to place to preach this gospel of eternal life. And so, I am not here for entertainment because the harvest is plenteous and the laborers are few. And Jesus Christ said, I must go to other places also so they can hear this gospel because that's why the Lord has raised me up. So I'm going to be very thorough in my preaching that if no other person preaches to you today and rapture takes place, you will make it to heaven. If no other person preaches to you this week and the rapture takes place, you will make it to heaven. If no other person preaches to you this year, you carry this into your heart and begin to cry and plead before God. And do all that you can be saved, you will find salvation in your life. Yes. So I'm going to be very thorough. I'm going to be very strong. Because that's my way of preaching. Everybody has his own characteristic. John the Baptist had his own characteristic of preaching. He had the spirit of Elijah. So every other person has his own characteristics. Even among the angels in heaven. In John Michael is militant. And in John Gabriel is civil. So everybody has his own characteristics. Is that okay? But God put it there. The broad and the narrow way before you. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 and 14. The Bible tells us here, saying, Enter ye in, at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way. That leadeth to destruction. And many there be. Which go in their heart. Because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way. Which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find in. Now, this scripture tells us there are two ways of life before all men to be followed in this life. There are two ways before you to be followed. There are two ways before me to be followed. The one is the broad way. The other is the narrow way. And both of them are to be followed. 
both of them are to be followed. But the choice is yours. Which, for which of the ways to take the decision is yours. To follow which way. We are here now preaching. There are many churches around here. But the decision is for everybody. Which church to branch to? If a newcomer comes here, there's church there, there's church there, there's church here, there's church there. Which one does he go? He is to take his decision. Or which one is he awful, I I mean, I mean, accustomed to? That is okay for him that he has chosen. He follows that. Nobody forces him. Although everybody is looking at him. Are you coming to our place? Are you coming here? Is it here? We are looking for you. We want you. But nobody forces him. So that is how it is. As for the work, work of life. The way of life. Only two are available. Only two are set before you. Only two are set before him. Only two are set before her. Only two are set before me. Only two are set before them. The broad way and the narrow way. So, each way has its own characteristics. They are not the same. Each way has its own characteristics. Now let's examine the broad way. Look at it again. In Matthew chapter 7. I read Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 and 14. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in their heart. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Now, concerning the broad way, the Bible says the broad way leads to the broad gate. The wide gate. Broad way leads to the broad gate. Or the wide gate. It is the road or the way is wide enough to have many walk in it without difficulty. Without blocking the other. No. It's free at all. That you can walk in it. Your friend can walk in it. Your brother can walk in it. Your father can walk in it. Your mother can walk in it. Your children can walk in it. Your neighbor can walk in it. Your colleague can walk in it. The young and the old. With all their styles of walking. They can walk on it. It is a broad way. Wide enough. Yes. Wide enough. The gate is wide enough to have many people enter into it. You don't struggle to enter into the gate. The gate is wide enough. Very wide. Very, very wide. It, is, it was made for, the, for multitudes. So, it was wide enough that you can go freely through the gate. You can drive truly through the gate. You can run truly through the gate. You can fly truly through the gate, freely through the gate. The gate is wide enough. It has made provision for all. But this road leads to destruction on earth. That's the only thing about it. This free road, free path, that does not hinder you Give you all your opportunities. It leads to destruction in this life. It does not do well to those that walk in it. It is deceitful. 
to those that walk in it. It dries up those that walk in it. It turns off those that walk in it. It maddens those that walk on it. It makes them unreasonable, those that walk on this broad way. Makes them unreasonable. It makes them of no benefit. Those that walk on it, they have no benefit in this life. It makes them dejected. It does not have, doesn't give real pleasure, actually. Those that walk on this broad way, they don't enjoy real pleasure of life. That's what the Bible says. It leads to destruction. It leads to destruction. It has no peace for those that walk on it. It is the road of defeatism. All that follow it are defeated in life. Or oh, it is the road of enslavement. It enslaves those that follow it. This road, that's what the Bible calls it. It is the road of destruction. It is the road. It leads to destruction. Restlessness. It tarnishes the image of those that walk on it. And the gate of this road opens to hell. Eternal destruction. Final destruction. It starts with earthly destruction. It ends with final destruction of hell. It ends with the final destruction of hell fire. That's the nature of this road. So, a scripture tells us a little about this road in the book of Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 14. I read verse 12. The Bible says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of Dead exactly. That's, that summarizes the broad way. It is the immediate way available. It has all the signs of attraction. But if you go further and further, it will reveal its characteristics. There is a way the cement rod at, at first is attractive because it's easily available. But as you continue, it reveals its own property. It tells you its own nature. You begin to experience it. At the end, it is the way of death. It is the way of death. It is the way of sorrow. It is the way of unattainment. You can't attain real life by it. It's a way of deceit. It was, at the end you discover it's a trap. It's a snare. So, that's the way of destruction. The broad way. Now, there is the second way. I said there are only two. It is the narrow way. Go back to Matthew chapter 7. Verse 13 and 14. The Bible tells us here saying, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way. That leadeth to destruction. And many there be. Which go in their heart. Because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way. Which leadeth unto life. And few there be. That find it. Now. Who is presenting these two ways? Jesus. When he was speaking about the narrow way, when he was speaking about the broad way, he never encouraged anybody to enter into that way. He never encouraged you to follow the broad way, although it is the available road. Very easily available. It is the road immediately available. Jesus never encouraged you to follow that way. He never the God of your life never encourages you to follow that way. No. He frowns at those that follow that way. 
He pities those that follow the broad way. He laments over them. He won't see them again. If they don't turn back from that way, he will not see them again. They have gone. They have gone forever. It's a voice of pain he shall hear of them. Cry of pain and sorrow and regret. But when he comes to the narrow way, he says, please enter into the straight gate. Into the narrow gate. Straight means narrow. Enter into that narrow gate. He, he preached that narrow gate. He preached that narrow way. He encourages people on that narrow way. Say, enter in there. Enter in there. At that narrow way. When a thing is narrow, what happens? You pass one by one. You don't carry your family and pass there. The place is so narrow. Others wait for you. For you to pass. They pass there one by one. That narrow way is the way of individuals. It's the way of individuals. There are multitudes, but you pass there one by one. It's like a roadblock on the way. The soldier's roadblock. That vehicles pass one by one because they have to be checked. They have to be examined to know what content the vehicle has. So that's why they're passing there. The machine has to screen them. It's the way of screening. So as a result, you don't pass there in multitude. Families don't pass together one by one individual members of the family because God the creator is not calling you as a family. He's calling you as individual. He did not create you as a family. He created you as an individual and he is supervising you to pass through that way, calling you pass through that way. I will examine that way. Direct your feet on that way. It's a way of individual. So he's, play, he's preaching it. Follow the narrow gate. Pass through it. The way is narrow enough to deny careless and carefree persons to walk on it. Careless and carefree persons can never walk on it. Careless. You close your eyes and be going. You can never follow it. You miss your way. You miss your way. Carefree persons. You don't bother. Whatever happens, no, you can't follow it. You can't follow that way. You can't. You will turn off. You will turn off. So it is so it is so narrow enough to deny careless persons, carefree persons to walk on it walk on it. Hence, those that walk on it are thoughtful. They're those that sit down and think like the prodigal son. They're those who have come to their wit's end. They're those who have to think through about the broad way. What's the benefit? I've gone all this while on the broad way. I'm seeing the characteristics of people there. I study their lives. I look to the end. I perceive that the lion is on the way. So I withdraw. There are people that are thoughtful. There are people that are considerate. I have heard of people that follow this way. They never came back. I had the story about them. How it went eventually with them. So, the people that follow this way, they are thoughtful people. Yes, they are purposeful. They follow them purposefully. They follow this narrow way purposefully. They have a purpose to achieve for themselves, for their life, for God, and for others. They have a soul to preserve. Eternity to make. Eternity to make. They are determined for heaven. That's why they chose the narrow way. Because it is the way of heaven. They, they want to be there. They want to be there. So they purposefully follow it. They don't get it by assumption. No, not by assumption. If a costly something is put in your hand. And you don't know the meaning. You will abandon it somewhere. A story was told of a woman that a man wrote a great man that she served, wrote his will and gave the woman, when I die, take over my resources. 
A great man. Mighty man with great wealth. Great riches in the bonds. And this woman put the wheel. She, she laminated it. Framed it up. And hung it like a, a wall clock in her room. Very poor. Dejected. Nobody to help her. And when people visited her, how is it? Uh, well, this man died, and since he died, no food, no war. Until a man came and said, Mommy, what is hanging in your house? It's okay, it is the paper that man gave me. It's the paper. So I'm hanging it, so people will know, maybe I serve a man. So the man examined the paper. It was the will of that man. Just to carry that paper to bank and claim all the money that wealthy man had. Wonderful. What a wonderful privilege. Wonderful privilege. But because she didn't know, you may not know that it's a wonderful privilege that I am here today. You may be spending your time in anger. You might be saying, finish your preaching and go. What a, what an ignorance like that woman. What an ignorance. Deep ignorance in your heart that that makes you not to know the day of your visitation, the day of divine mercy, the day of appearance of Jesus for your salvation. You are not aware. Like this other woman sitting there. So, I'm saying this narrow way is the way of those who are purposeful. They have something. So they can't throw it away. If you understand that you have a soul, you will pay keen attention to my message. To the world of life. I read it from the Bible. It's quickened by the Holy Ghost. For your own life. For your own salvation. For your own freedom. This narrow way is the way of the prayerful. You don't go there by your grace. You ask God daily. Oh Lord help me. God lead me. God lead me. God help me. Asking for grace daily. Asking him to help you. Asking him to give you grace. Give me grace to follow. Abundant grace to follow. Because not everybody works on this way. Majority of people are not working on this way. Some are tempted and failed. Some are tempted. And got discouraged. On the way. Because they used their strength. They thought to use the intelligence. But they failed. Therefore, you, it is a way of prayer. You must pray. I'm climbing up the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I onward bound. Lord, lead my feet to higher ground. It is a way of prayer. Except you bring prayer to this your Christianity. You are on the broad way. If you attempt the narrow way, you won't walk in it. Because it's the way of grace. Those that walk on this way are those with miracles. The miracle of the new birth. Born again. Except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He cannot follow the narrow way to serve the Lord. Except he's born again. And born again, ask the Lord to serve you from your sin. Ask the Lord to change your life. Ask the Lord to change your thoughts. Let the wicked forsake his thoughts. Even the thoughts of your heart must be changed. The way of your life must be changed. The way of the transgressor is hard. Your own way as a sinner is a difficult way. It makes you difficult. It makes way of life difficult. It makes your moving forward difficult. You therefore ask God for his grace to give you a new way. The way of life. The narrow way to adapt you to this way. Construct you and put more uh, uh, members of the body Renew yourself. Renew your life. I mean regenerate your system. Regenerate your, regenerate your person. So you'll be able to follow this narrow way. It's a narrow way. It's the way of the prayerful. It's the way of the watchful. The devil has hindered people from following this way. The devil has put, set so many snares on this way. If you're not watchful, your feet will enter into a snare. You're, you will not be able to walk forward. Your feet will enter into a snare. If you are not watchful, remember it's so narrow. 
Somebody coming in the opposite side can pull you down. Satan is walking on this way and he's trying to start to pull people down. He is the op- he's just completely attacking people. So watch, watch. When Satan is world is manifesting himself somewhere, he's standing by the sides of the way to draw your feet. So watch and ensure you, when you see the devil call upon God, angels will clear him out of the way. God will clear him out of the way. So it is the way of the watchful. Watch and pray that ye may, in, may not enter into the tempt, into temptation. Yes, it is the way of the careful. Those who are very careful in their way. Very, because you can, sins are so many in this world. If you don't watch very well, you will match sin. You will match evil. Sins are so many. Many people are contaminated with sin. Be careful, lest you will package one of them and your body will become contaminated. So, it is the way of the watchful. Yes, it is the, uh, it is the way of the focused. The way of the focused. You focus heaven. You're focusing on Jesus. That is the narrow way. You see him because the energy is coming from him. The power is coming from him. He's the one drawing you through that way. So, focus on him. Jesus Christ was walking on the water. And when Peter saw him, Peter said, Lord, if you are the one, invite me to come. Jesus said, come. Peter jumped from the boat into the water and began to walk as long as he was watching Jesus. The power to walk was given to him. As long as he believed in Jesus' ability, as long as he believed in the weights of Jesus, he was moving on top of the water, despite the wind that was contrary. But at the time, Peter became conscious of his environment. Conscious of the water. And looked back. When he looked back, what happened to him? When he looked back, what happened to him? He began to sing. So, it is the way of the focus. Focus on Jesus. Don't look back. Don't knock to the left hand, not to the right. Look right on before thee. Let your eyes look straight to the Savior. He has enough grace. He has a communication system that will, you will be hearing regularly from him to keep you moving forward. You are, it's a connection. Your eyes are important to this walk because if your eye is single, looking unto Jesus, your whole body shall be full of life. So that's the way. Yes. And the way is designed to lead people to safety. If you follow this narrow way, it will lead you to safety. It is the way of salvation. Salvation from any power, any force, any sin, any evil. Salvation from Satan, demons, evil men, evil women. Salvation from anything, sickness, disease, epidemics, call them whatever. It is the way of salvation. It's the way of salvation. Yes, it is the way of blamelessness. The way of blamelessness. Not everybody will be telling, hey, this boy, hey, this girl, this man, this woman is stubborn, is wicked, is evil. Is No! Neither way people are way of blamelessness. Because you are going by God. You speak by Him. You live by Him. He inspires and directs you what to do, what to say. Reasonable people will not blame you. Your ways are right, for the thoughts of the righteous are right. So, it's the way of blamelessness, the way of victory, victory over sin, victory over Satan, victory over the evil man, victory over evil associations, victory over the plans of the wicked. It is the way of victory. It is the way of peace. You will have peace in your life. You will have rest in your life. 
You will have peace with God. You will have peace with man. If a man's way pleases the Lord, what does he do? He makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. That's the way of peace. It is the way of prosperity. You will gain. You will not lack your food. You will not lack your drink. You will not lack the essentials of life. Provisions of God. Even the abundance of God. It's the way of prosperity. It's the way of wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. In all you're getting, get understanding. The narrow way is the way of wisdom because it is completely free from sin. Sin is error. Sin is error. Righteousness is wisdom. Why? It's free from sin. The narrow way in past wisdom is the way of righteousness. Sin is not there. So you get pure wisdom. You know, people manufacture honey. But there is some honey we say is pure honey. Is that so? It's not contaminated. The wisdom of, of this world is contaminated wisdom. Contaminated with sin. And some honey is contaminated with water. Contaminated with sugar. Contaminated with other things. But they are pure honey. Actual honey extract. Pure. And the way of, the narrow way will give you that wisdom. Pure wisdom. In this life, and of course, I told you, the gate opens up to eternity with God. That gate is narrow. But when you enter into that gate, the broadness is now over behind the gate. Telling you, you are entering into vast eternity. Vast eternity. Great world without end. A city of righteousness. You're entering into the presence of God that fills the universe. You're entering into life with God with uncountable number of angels. You're entering into life with God, life with the saints that live this world with you, live righteously in this earth. So, the narrow way. Now, I've told you, Jesus particularly preached the narrow way. But, he showed people, the broad way is there. Now, the, the decision comes to you. I took my decision. I am on the narrow way. I took my decision to walk in it, to live in it. To speak of the narrow way. I took my decision. It's costly, but I took it. It doesn't matter. To be in this narrow way. That's the Christianity I chose. And that is the way I preach. It is of choice. I have chosen the way of truth. I made choice. I sat down and considered. And I said I've chosen the way of truth. I've chosen the narrow way. Of course... God invited me into choice. And I chose the narrow way. God invited me into choice. And I chose the narrow way. That's why I am a preacher of the narrow way. I don't have another way to preach to you. I cannot preach the broad way. It has no meaning in life. Look at it in the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 30. Deuteronomy chapter 30. I read from verse 15. The Bible tells us here saying, See, I have said before thee this day, life and good, and death and evil, in that, I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land, whither thou goest to possess it. But 
if thine heart turn away, so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that you will surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life, and the length of thy days. That thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord, that the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. The Lord says, See, I have said before thee this day, life and good, death and evil. Two ways. Two things. Life and good, death and evil. I have said before you. Now, you, let's come to you as an individual. You, let's come to you as a family. You, let's come to you as a minister. You, let's come to you as a businessman. You, let's come to you as a denominational church. I've said before you. Life and good, death and evil. Again, he said, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have said before you, life and death, two ways. Life and death. Blessing and cursing. Two things. Life and death, choose. Blessing and cursing, choose. I've set them before you. Now, why is the Lord saying you should choose? Why is the Lord not pushing you to choose? Why is the Lord not forcing one upon your life? If he does so, he ceases to be a holy God. If he does so to push you, force you, he ceases to be a righteous God. He ceases to be a truthful God. He ceases to be a God of equality. He ceases to be a God of impartiality. Why? There are people who are already in hell now. Why didn't he force them to choose the right way? If God must force you to choose it, if God must pull you to choose it, why did he not pull those who are in hell now? They will blame him and say he's an unequal God. They will blame him. They will say he loves others more. He loves some more than others. They will blame him. They will say he created some people for damnation and some people for life. That is why he helped some people and didn't help others. That's why God said, no, I bring you to the point of choice. And I make the, the choices very clear and I withdraw. So that if you choose good, if anybody wants to blame me, why he is suffering judgment, I will say he didn't make use of his heart well. He didn't make use of his mind well. He didn't make use of his eyes well. He didn't make use of his ears well. He didn't make use of his mouth well. He didn't use his tongue well. Otherwise, why were some people saved and he was not? They used their choice. I didn't force them. So God will not force you. God is not going to force you. God will not force this church. No. He will not. He will bring you to the point of choice and leave you there. The choice remains the bishop's own. The pastor's own. The choice remains the, the leader's own. To know how will this church go 
Which path has he taken? Where will he follow? God will not force it. No. If he forces you, why is he not forcing your neighboring churches? Why must God force you or not force the neighboring churches? Then they will, they will say, no, you love others. You love some more than others. He said, no, I make the way clear. I make the doctrine clear. That's why we who preach truth must preach it without respect of persons. Else the people will blame God. They will say they have never heard. They will say they have never listened. And if we don't preach the truth, God will condemn us. Because we are wicked. We are wicked. We came to where people would need truth to be saved. And we are respecting persons there. Or pitying individuals. No. That's why we who want to go to heaven, we put people behind us and set Jesus before us. We put the world behind us and set the cross before us. Whatever will come, whatever is the result of the abuse, we will preach this truth. Because it is the reason you will be judged tomorrow. Reason for your salvation today. Reason for your damnation tomorrow. We are making the thing so clear. The choice is yours. What's God saying? The Lord is saying, in that I commanded this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and that the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. What's the Lord saying? That you should love him. Love God. Love Jesus. Love his word. Love is righteousness. Love is holiness. Love obedience to him. Love God. Submit to him. Obey his word. His word over your life. His word over your family. His word over your marriage. His word over your ministry. His word over your business. Student. His word in your school. Concerning your school. Concerning everything. His word. Church. Concerning church, worship, and administration. That you submit to it. That you follow his word. And in that way, that the Lord might multiply you. Because like begets like. Donkeys give birth to donkeys. Dogs give birth to dogs. Tigers give birth to tigers. Birds give birth to birds. And so on. Life begins life. The Lord says, if you don't change, you will multiply your kind. And the more you multiply, the more iniquity will come. Because everyone will be bringing his own style of evil. His own imagination of evil. But if you change, you get purified as a church. You begin to grow in newness. You are going to grow by that which you have formed in you. The seeds of righteousness shall grow. The persons of righteousness shall grow. You will be growing according to your kind. That's what the Lord is saying. You will be growing. That thou might multiply. He wants to make you multiply. In righteousness. In the right cause. If you take the right cause, he will increase you in it. So, that, that then he will bless you. The Lord will bless you. He will bless the work of your hand. He will bless the people. He will bless your children. He's going to bless the church. He will bless your ministry. He will bless everything. Why? He's the God that wants progress. He created this world to be inhabited. And he, he, he inhabits the praises of his people. Where pure praise is coming, the Lord gives attention to it. That's why we're very careful in our ministry. The Lord is with us. He goes with us. We maintain holiness so that he can love us. He will love us. He loves us. He goes with us wherever we go. Why? We maintain righteousness. We maintain truth. We preach the truth. We live holy. So God is with us. In the same way, if you accept this gospel, to come to him, to live holy, Live sanctified. Live in obedience to the word of God. You will see his presence here. He will always be with you. He will always go with you. That's the thing. That's what we're saying. But a lot of so wants 
He preaches this, but he warns against evil. He said, But if your heart turn away so that you will not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day. If you refuse me, if you refuse my way, if you refuse my holiness, if you refuse my truth, if you receive my life, cursed are thou. I denounce against you. I pronounce woe upon you that you will not prosper. You will not succeed. You will not make progress. Is the earth not in my hand? Is the future not in my hand? Am I not the one that made heaven and hell? If you reject God, that you will be stubborn to God, that you will be rebellious to God, God says you're under a curse. Woe is unto you. For he said, that man that betrayed the Son of God is better he were not created. Better than that to raise hard hand against the Son of God. Because God became man and he would dis disdain God. Is better he was not created. That's what the scripture is saying. That's what the Lord is making known to you already. It's like somebody is speaking to someone. Stop this immorality. If you enter into the hands of HIV AIDS, you will regret being, being born to this life. Your life will be distorted. Your marriage will be distorted. Your future will be distorted. You yourself will lose the, your personality. You, you yourself will lose your image. Your name will be a rottenness in society. And you will die the date of a cursed person. So, it's just like somebody telling you like that. God is telling you greater things more because a sinner is worse than, a sin is worse than HIV AIDS. Sin is worse than that. To be a sinner and reject God, there is worse than that for your life. Worse than that in your future. Worse than that waiting for you just a little mile away from where you are. That's what the Lord is saying. So the decision is yours. What do you choose now? He has painted some, the thing white and painted the other one black. Clearly enough for you to know the way, the narrow way. Clearly enough for you to know where the, the broad way. Now, what's your decision? The decision God has called, has always given man the right to free choice and decision in life. Having put in man the sense of, re of reasoning. Man's enemy is clear to him. The devil. Sin. Man's instinct speaks to him of right and wrong. God, you know yourself. When you do evil, you say, ah, I've done evil. Your conscience will tell you. The instinct in you will tell you. The instinct speaks to you of right and wrong. And when you do good, your conscience will also tell you. God has given man understanding by which to know and serve him. By this, you know and serve him. You are called to a decision on which of the two ways to walk or remain walking, being on it already in the following areas. Now, which of the two ways? I want to start with you, student. I want to start with you. Maybe I'll start with the children first. Children, you can hear. Children, People that the Lord granted them grace to heaven and to hell say they, fought, they saw children of even three years in hell fire. Children of how many years? They are in church. They teach them in church. Their conscience has been enlightened. They have understood Jesus. They have understood Satan. They have understood this. Enough that if they are initiated by the devil, they will tell their mother, 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 I've been initiated. I dream I saw myself somewhere. They are enough to tell that. Enough that if there's meat in the pot, they will not take. They have understood. Enough that they can tell good and evil. Such ones are already subject to judgment. Why didn't they give their lives to Christ? When you have come to know the difference between good and evil, why didn't you choose good? When you have come to know the difference between God and Satan, why didn't you reject Satan and choose God? God is going to be filled with children. He's dealing with a soul. He's not dealing with the body. He's dealing with a soul that lives forever. He's asking that soul 
The maker of the soul is asking that soul. You are looking at the body. The hands are not strong. The legs are not strong. But the God of heaven is looking at the soul. Mature enough to answer. You have come to the point that you could see this and see that. Why didn't you choose good? And the children is the children that miss God are dumped into hell. Now, the choice is for the child. Do you want to join secret society? Or you want to reject that and follow Jesus? Do you want to join occultism? Do you want to practice witchcraft? Or you will confess your witchcraft and accept Jesus? You come forth and say, yes, pray for me. I am in witchcraft. Somebody initiated me. They gave me sweet. They gave me some meat in the school. I ate the sweet. I drank the thing, the thing they gave me in school, in school. And I told myself somewhere, somebody else has called me and is taking me to a meeting. Children cry out. If you don't cry out, hellfire is waiting for you. Everybody say hell. hell. Say it again. Hell. hell is where sinners are doomed. Witches and wizards are burned with fire. If they have taken you there, you must confess. If you stole anything, a child. Child, if you have stolen anything, go and report yourself. Bring back what you have stolen and report yourself. Don't allow sin to be in your life. When they talk about giving their life to Jesus, say, I am here also. I want to give my life to Jesus. I don't want to perish. I don't want to go to hell. Therefore, Lord Jesus, serve me. You must pray. If you are a liar, child, you must stop it. You must stop it. You must accept Jesus. God doesn't want sinners. Not even in children. He doesn't want sin to be in your life. As much as you can hear me, cry out to God and say, God, forgive me. Now I come to you. The choice is yours. Our educational system is polluted. And you go to school. But Satan has taken over schools. The way has been very narrow. In the school now, many things have entered into school. How do you live your life? The choice is yours. Occultism has come to school. They are initiating everybody. They are even using force. What do you do? Do you keep quiet when they come to you? Or you cry out and get their report. Get them reported. The choice is yours. Either to shut your mouth and allow them to take you off. Or you cry out and say, no, I can't be in occultism. I can't be in evil. Neither Cry out to those people. Shout the name of Jesus before them. Shout it. The choice is yours. To be serious with Christ or to allow occultism to take you off. Then what about all those th- exam with, pass exam without tears? What about all those ones? Don't read, but pass. You just contribute money. Are you contributing money in the school? To pass exam you never read for. To pass exam you never read for. Is that what the Lord told Adam? That sin of the thing I'll say, from the sweat of your face you shall eat. Is that not what Jesus, the God of heaven told man? From the sweat of your face. Is it not what God said, whatever a man sows he shall reap? You don't want to reap what you sow if you are lazy in school. You are lazy in school. You're not, you're not concentrated in school. You don't want to reap what you sow. You want to break the commandment of God. You want to pass it cheap. To reap where you have not sown. Have you seen any man entering a farm that he didn't cultivate and start harvesting? Have you seen any man? Why should the devil tell you that you should receive pass when you have never worked? Now, that puts you on a satanic camp. It gives you a false certificate. It gives you contaminated certificate. Your foundation is out of course. And if the foundation is out of course, where is the hope of the righteous? Where is the hope of your heaven? Where is the future hope? You say, you are, I've got job, a cursed job. Cursed. Job of a thief. The job of a thief. That's a cursed job. The certificate is not yours. That certificate is speaking against you. That certificate is speaking against you. So, the choice is yours in school to decide that I will not cheat. It's better I fail in school than cheat and fail to hell. The choice is yours. 
The blessings of God are there without going to, whether you go to school or not. The God of your life is standing by to assist you, whether you pass your exams or not. So, but the choice is here. How do you want to live your life? You want to be doing all those giraffe? The choice is here. Or, I will not. In fact, if you have collected such type of certificate, the choice remains yours. Whether you destroy that certificate, you report yourself to the YA and say, oh, I cheated. Take back your certificate. Or, you continue with it. The choice is yours. But then, there's a future. In, for one, for one choice, you follow the broad way. For the other choice, you follow the narrow way. Narrow way is so hard. Because the narrow way demands do away with that certificate and start your exam again. You, the other one was a cheat. You went to marry somebody's wife, release that woman and look for your own wife. It's a hard thing. The narrow way, that's why only few find it. So, that's what we are saying. And the choice is just whether you'll be deceiving your parents so that because of money in school, give me, give me, telling various lies, or you'll be truthful. As a student, the choice is yours. Whether you join in the immorality in the school, the committing immorality there, the choice is also yours. Whether, whatever, the choice is yours. One choice puts you on the narrow way. The other choice puts you on the broad way. Narrow way to lie. Broad way to death and destruction. The choice is yours. Now let's come to the business man. Business. Everybody say business. Say it again. The business of this present life. They are getting darker and darker. But there is a narrow path. Available for the businessman to follow. And still make heaven. The rest is the broad way. The broad way of lying. The broad way of cheating. The broad way of evil. The broad way of evil association. The broad way of using charm. The broad way of using charm. That one is there in your business. Telling lies. Cheating people. Falsifying accounts and records. That is there. People, the, many are following that Broadway. Many. 419. Yes, cheats. They're following that way. Evil people are following that way. The choice is your businessman. Whether you will follow the narrow way, even if you don't make much money, because you have narrowed your business. Even if you don't make much money. Because you have narrowed your customers. Even if you don't make much money. You have narrowed your investment. Why? You are more concerned with righteousness. You are more concerned with holiness. You are more concerned with eternity. Whether this is the way you will choose. And leave your blessing in the hands of God alone. For he knows how to prosper you. Because that way. He said if you obey me I will bless you. I'll prosper you. I'll keep you. I'll preserve you. If you pay your tithes, I'm going to bless you. Bring here your tithes and offering into the house of God. I will rebuke the devourer for you. I will make you star. I will make your business to blossom. All men shall call you blessed. You shall be a delightsome person. Will you follow this way? The blessings come from God alone. Or you want all the money of the government. All the money of the people. All the money of this thing. And that's how you run. Following the broad way as others do. The choice is yours. The choice is yours. But for your information, there are many, on the, there are many also on the narrow way. They have come in there. Many of your brethren in this world are clean in business. Many Christians are clean in business. Their tongue doesn't tell lies. Doesn't tell lies. Their records are clean. The path they follow is clean. No bribery on their way. And yet they are making it. So the choice is yours. God helps them. God helps them. He still has made a narrow path. 
to pass through those places. Those places. There's a narrow path you can pass through. Narrow path. But the race are in the broad path. Broad path of the business life. Proclaiming righteousness, but they're in the broad path. Say that it is God that prospered them, but they're in the broad path. Yes, many are there. So the choice is yours. Which path to follow? Then come to the marital life. The choice is yours. Everybody again said the choice is mine. You have not yet married. Who are you going to marry? The choice is in your hand. God will not release a husband from heaven and land in your house. He will not release a wife from heaven and the wife will just land in your house. No. There are men and women available. But how do you marry? Do you just want to go and pick anyone you want? Close your eyes. How many women are there? Five. Anyone my hand shall catch. Crap. Is my own. Is that what you're going to do? How many men? Any men? Any man? Is that what you're going to do? The choice is yours. What is the narrow path? The narrow path says pray to God. And you who are praying must be a child of God. You must be born again. Because God cannot give holy things to dogs. If you are an immoral lady, or an immoral boy, more moral man. How do you expect God to give a holy daughter to you? How? Is it possible? I'm asking, is it possible? No. Marrying, the narrow part is there. The broad part is there. You pray. Your life still have to be righteous. Be worthy for God to give you a worthy gift. Be worthy for God to give you a worthy gift. By your life. Then you have got to go to prayer. And ask him. Ask him. Ask him. Ask. It shall be given to you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Whoever asketh, receive it. He that seeketh, find it. To him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Or what man of you? If his son shall ask bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he shall ask fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to them that ask him? He's your father, if you are his child indeed. Then go and ask him for a wife. Then go and ask him for a husband. And wait, the Lord will bring the husband. How? Don't ask it will be clear. My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. It's not yet clear because it has not yet come. Or maybe you have not yet consecrated your life. Maybe there's still some sins in your life and the Lord has said, don't give holy things to dogs. That's the narrow way. To get a husband. To get a wife. But then there's the broad way. The broad way is the way of the market. It's the way of the internet. Is the way of the newspapers. Yes. You just write out. I am of this number of age. I am a young man of 35 years old. And I want a lady. Tall. Fair. With first degree. And she should be speaking about three languages. As you advertise that in the paper. Somebody will answer over there. They are waiting for you. Somebody will answer. Is that, is that telephone call to God? Eh? You are speaking within the earth. And somebody answers. And it matches. He says, yes. Ah, if it is God, not God. Who told you it's God? Is that what God says? Is the newspaper the Bible? So, you have gotten what you are looking for. Or you just came across somebody like that and said, look at it, look at it. You resemble our family. You will come and be my wife. And that's how you go. That's what you do. That's the broad way of marriage. And after you marry, cry. No, we're, di- we're going to divorce. No, I didn't know that we're, we didn't match before. Did you ask the father? Did you ask the creator? 
You didn't. Uh, I don't know who will divorce, who will divorce. And you just send the woman away. Or you leave the man and vanish away. He said, no, we are not compatible. We are not compatible. Who told you that you were not compatible? Adam, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the fruit which you were forbidden to eat? Otherwise, how could you be coming to say you are not compatible? Otherwise, how could you be complaining? Have you eaten of the fruit which you were told that you should not eat? It's because you didn't follow the call. You went through the broad way to get your wife. That's why you're regretting now. But for your information, there's no divorce. All those people preaching to you that you can divorce your wife or your husband and marry another, they are ignorant people who don't know the truth of scripture. And the devil uses many of them to send people to hell. Therefore, no divorce. A man, the Bible says, he that created them from the beginning did not make spear woman or spear man as people make spare parts, that in case this one damages, you can fix in another one. Did God make spare woman? Did he make spare man? Exactly. There's no divorce. Adam and Eve continued to be married, even when Eve brought him, in, brought him the greatest problem of life. Which problem can your wife give to you? There's more than what Eve gave to Adam. Yet, the two of them remained. Until death do them part. The two of them remained. You and your wife must remain. Until they do you part. If for any reason that there can be separation, any reason, it will be well verified. And yet in that case, you won't be stay without, you will stay without marriage. Until you come back again. If you know it like this. The danger of this broad way of marriage. Why are you so careless? Why are you marrying anyhow? Why are you picking anyhow? Why are you giving an answer to a man because you feel he has, uh, he has money? He has this. Money can fly away. So, the, the, the choice is yours to follow the narrow way, the way of righteousness, the way of submission to God, the way of marrying a child of God, not an unbeliever, according to the scripture, or to marry as you want. That is the choice. Now, the family life. The choice. God has set the family life. Children, be obedient to your parents. It's your choice. Child, whether you will obey your parents or not, you feel you have come to age. And uh, by my age, I am, sub I am free. By my age, who gives age? Who gives age? I say, who gives age? Well, just to, to relax your heart a story, a small boy, a small girl rather, of about four years now, was told some months ago, at the beginning of this year, that she was four years old. Recently, she asked her mother, Mother, how old am I? Buy? What is it? Ah, you are four. She was not happy. How am I always four? You told me the other time that I was four years and up to this time, other people are growing in Asia. You see, telling me that I am four years. The girl was not happy with the mother. Who gives age? Now, maybe it's the mother. <laughs> maybe it's the mother. It's God that gives age. And the God that gives age says, submit to your parents. Children, obey your parents that it may be well with you that ye may live long on the earth that scripture will you obey that or you say you're bigger I am of age I am of age no the government has told me that anytime I come to the age of 18 I am free no, the government has said my father must never beat me. My mother must never beat me. Cursed government. That's cursed government. It's a government that is directly in disobedience to God. 
God says, train up your child. You shall beat him with the rod. Spear the cane and spoil the child. Go forward. I give you that child. Foolishness is bound in the child, in the heart of a child. But the rod of correction shall clear that foolishness out of the child. That's the creator of the child. Is the government the creator of the child? Answer me. Is the government the creator of the child? Is the government your creator? The creator of your life, superior to the government, has said your parents should beat you with the rod. Satanic government that is against your prosperity, putting you on the broadway to destruction, is saying, if your father beats you, report to us. If your mother beats you, report to us. And you are really doing it. You are really boasting, not knowing that you are on the broad way to destruction. Not knowing that there is no fool like you. Not knowing that the devil has taken over your life to guide you to hell. You can't hear anymore. You can't be changed anymore. Because without fire, there are many, the thing cannot be cooked. Without fire, what can you cook? Can you cook anything without fire? How can a child be trained without a cane? How can a child have humility of life without a cane? Without beating? How can a child change without a cane? Spear the rod and spoil the child. It's better you remove yourself from such crazy government and come to where you find life. Where you can lead your children to heaven than to destroy and damn them because they're looking for money. Or you're looking for education. Or you're looking for any kind, any damnable thing of this world. That to, that children should just die and go to hell. Because the government, the devil has taken over the government. Child, the responsibility is yours. Whether you will submit yourself to the training of your parents. You will subject yourself according to the word of God. Superior to anything in this life. The word of your creator. The word of the king of kings. Lord of love. The word of the wisest. Wiser than the wisest of the world. That says, training should be done. The choice is yours. If you submit to obey the voice of your parents, eternal life. That song you sang, eternal, eternal life. I want to live eternal life. Child, it is found in obeying the word of God. The voice of God. By submitting, the choice is yours. Or you remain stubborn. Let's fight it together. You remain stubborn over age. No, you can't do me anything. I know how to run. I know how to escape. Damnation. That's the broad way. Now, come back again to the family. How do you lead your family? Parents? What do you do? Do you train your children? Or you leave them alone? Money is more. You use some other systems. Some other methods. The scriptures, the scriptures have not recommended that's what you're using over the children. Or you're pampering them. You don't rebuke your children. When they do evil, they say, okay, just rub them on their head. And don't do it again. <laughs> don't do it again. Is that what you're doing? Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. If that is what you're doing, you cannot be firm with your children. You're, they are on the Broadway. You put them there. On the Broadway. Because the narrow way is the way of training. Beat them with a cane and don't care for their crying. Don't care when they found their eyes. Don't cry when they bring their teeth together as if they're looking at you. They pass, the Lord has commanded the ocean that they should not pass their boundary. The Lord has put the authority of the father upon him. The authority of the mother upon him. However rude that child is, the Lord will spare you before that child. Therefore, stand on your word of God. Take your stand. Otherwise, you're handing over your children to Satan to pollute the world that God has created. And the Lord will not spare you too. So the choice is yours. To do all to train your children. All. Or abandon them. Early in the morning, no, devo no family devotion. No nothing. No going to church. No, whatever the child lies right from a childhood, allow him, oh no, no, allow him, allow him, as they're doing in America and London, ah, allow him, give him, oh, allow him, allow him. Never! Never! The word of God says, train up your child. So the choice is yours. How should your family live? 
What videos should your family be watching? Is it the corrupting ones? Is it this one that promotes immorality? Is it this one that promotes crime? The choice is in your heart. Many families are on the Broadway. Oh, you say no. All these videos promoting crime, promoting immorality, promoting all this worthlessness. No, not here. Not in this house. Not here. Not in this house. You can take your stand. Ye shall decree a thing and God shall establish it on for you. So, the church is your, the choice is yours. To bring God into your family or not. The choice is yours. To preach Jesus in your family or not. The choice is yours. Which church should you go? The choice is yours. The, the Christian life. The way is clear to you. It has been preached. You have read it in books. You have read it in the Bible. The way of righteousness. The way of holiness. It's very clear to you. The way of righteousness. How to please God. Is clear. The holy man has been made known to you. The holy woman has been made known. The Christian dressing of a Christian. Of a believer. You have seen it. You have heard about it. That women. You don't palm your hair. You don't use attachment. You don't use wevon. Those things you are telling God. You are accusing him. That he was a fool who met you. That he didn't see well. He needed to have done this. He needed to have done that. He needed to have, but he didn't do it well. That's an accusation. You are saying the way of the Lord is not equal. That you are putting on the hair of another nation. You are trying to show that God honored those nations more than you. He honored those nations. See, this the glittering here, you get to the white woman. See, this type of flowing here, you get to the Asians. See, they, and look at us. Look at us now. Look at us. That's what you are telling God. This is what you are telling God. And God is angry for your challenging his wisdom. For challenging the work of his heart. The Lord is angry. And you are a liar because what you are putting on your head is not the hair God gave you. You are a liar. What you are carrying upon your hair, God did not give it to you. You are showing people that that's your hair. That's your, but it is not. It's a liar. And all liars shall have their part in the lake that burned with sulfur. And brimstone. That is the second date. The world is clear. Righteousness in you, woman. All this jewelry, earrings, rings, necklace, chains. These are the things called jewelries. These are the things called jewelries. Bracelets, beads that you use for decoration. They are worth linens. It's a sin to puncture your ear for your information. Watch it in a, in Eve that was created. God never did it. God never did it. He never punctured that ear. Earring was not hung there. And you are never more beautiful than Eve. It's the perfection of beauty of woman. The beginning of womanish beauty was found in Eve. Yet she was natural. Those things we employ, they came out of the, the, the corruption of man. Sinful dep depravity in man. Thinking that they make you more beautiful. No. They are the, they are the instruments, the wears of harlots, temple harlots, that will want to attract men in, to worship their idols. All these things you're putting in your ears, in your hands, just to make them great. They are for harlots. And God, who knew their origin, will never take them today. It's to tell them to put away their ornaments from them. Stiff necked people. Tell them! Let them put away their ornaments from them. That's the word of God. And all this dressing of harlots that you dress with your tight open. The preacher has to be looking well, not to look into your, look into your real womanish part. What a cursed thing. What a cursed thing. Hell is waiting for you. Hell is waiting for you. You have caused damnation into human society. Even when people come to church to serve God, you open your tie. Why are you opening your tie? And the, the handkerchief that is being to clean your face is the one you're using to cover your tie. What a dead thing, dirty, wretched evil that you're doing before the God of heaven. Do you all know him? Do you respect his church? Do you know how much he suffered on the cross? Do you know how much it paid? It cost Jesus to die on the cross. 
that you want to scatter his people with naked dressing. You want to open your power and corrupt the people of God. Judgment is coming upon your life. I'm telling you, you better run away from divine judgment that is coming upon your life. You're coming to spoil the church and make the ministers to be preaching under another anointing. Anointing of your tie and private body as a woman. Go and change those things. Go and change those things. Jesus carried whip. If Jesus come here physically, I'm telling you many women will scatter from this place. I'm telling you the truth. Many women, they will scatter from this place. If Jesus comes here because of the clothes of you, hard lots, you're putting upon your body, exposing your body, that people should see what happened to you. Are you in your senses? Are you coming here for Jesus? Are you like that? Stop it from today. Is that clear? Are you hearing me? I say what? Stop it from today. You are seeing my face. You are not seeing Jesus talking through me. You think it's a simple thing to go to hell. It's a simple thing for you to, to cause one of these little ones to offend and go to a tight fitting cloth and pit exposing body. So just like that to follow the course of the world. That is the broad way. Destruction is there. That is the broad way. Is the way leading to destruction. I'm telling you. But what about these ones that dress nice? That's the way of life. Dress clean. And I encourage you, woman. I appreciate your dressing. You're looking fine. You're looking clean. I'm talking to those who know themselves. You're looking fine. You are well covered. You're looking gentle. You're putting on the meekness of a woman. You're putting on the gentle, the gentleness of a woman. That's what God wants. Ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. That is what God wants. You're doing it. You're doing it as an example to other women. So they can see if it is not preached in their churches, when they see you on the way, they should learn from your life. May God stand behind you. May God back you up. That Christianity will revive through your life, through the life of people that are like you. In Jesus' name. Amen. We are spoken against the wearing of trousers. That that is not for women. Wearing of trousers is masculine dress. It's not for women. All these external nails, air bro, and all these things that are demonic. They are coming from Satan. And when they are in the church, the church can never catch the fire of the Holy Ghost. It can never catch the fire of the Holy Ghost. So that's what you know. Then the choice is yours. How to live your life now. He makes it very clear. The judgment that is coming, clear. The blessing and the reward, clear. The choice is yours. Then personal choice. What about the personal Christian ministry? The ministerial life. There are ministers today. And there are also ministers. Majority and few. Broad and narrow way. You... You, they are there. Some of them, if they come here, they will condemn my preaching. Especially if you bring a white man here. The white man will say, this is not modern salmon. This salmon is the salmon of John the Baptist. And you know, they killed him. <laughs> if you preach this type of salmon, your life will be cut short. And God said we should live long on the earth. So the white man will assess my sermon and warn you that you should not bring this type of preacher to this church again. Are you hearing me? They are Broadway. <laughs> they are the Broadway preachers. They are very intelligent. They have PhD. The doctors of divinity. They have they are professors of Professors of philosophy, educational philosophy. I'm mean, a professor of theological educational philosophy. They, they are authorities of Bible, commentators, who have given commentary, but they are on the Broadway. They are on the Broadway. I'm telling you, two types of preacher. They are on the Broadway. They are authorities in prosperity gospel. They know what every verse is saying concerning prosperity. Yes. They know. There are authorities in church growth. You want your church to grow and you are preaching like this. The church will never grow. 
They have wisdom. High sounding wisdom. They will tell you how to achieve your end, but be gradual about it. Be systematic. Let the people come. Let the people come. Let the people come. And when they come, you know how to systematically be patting them at the back. Uh-huh, yes, I go to heaven. Uh-huh. They, they will tell you, broad preachers, broad way preachers. <laughs> if you bring me to where those preachers are, they will know that they have learned their education in vain. I'll tell them where they belong. I'll tell them where they belong. That they belong to hell. I tell them they have no place in the church of Christ. Jesus Christ is coming maybe this night. I should be playing when I have opportunity to preach. Jesus is coming maybe this month. I should be playing with you when I have opportunity to preach to a soul. They don't understand. There are two kinds of preachers. The broad way preachers and the narrow preacher. I am of the narrow way. I am of the narrow way. And I've come here to make our preachers follow me on the narrow way. That's the way of life. That's the way of heaven. It may look hard to you, but you'll be happy tomorrow. I say you'll be happy tomorrow. A doctor in Joss was walking on the boon of someone whose boon was broken. As he was walking on the bone, he injected him, but uh, gave him anesthesia. Not the one that would make him die, make him um, um, go off on coma, but the one he could still be feeling small as the doctor was doing his work. As the doctor was walking on his leg, you, know, you have to walk the, hold the leg well, walk on the bones. The man began to abuse the doctor. Doctor, I didn't know you're so wicked like that. So you're wicked, I would deal with you. So you are very wicked like that. Oh, I will march down this doctor. Doctor was laughing. I understand. I know you don't know. That's why you're talking like that. I know you don't know. You are in a state of numbness. That's why you're speaking in that way. But then when the doctor finished his work, and the man now, blessed God for that man's leg. He said, doctor, how are you? My doctor was saying, how are you? So he would slap me and say, doctor, you know, <laughs> I didn't understand at that time. So preach the truth. Don't mind the people frowning their face. They have not understood. But when the work is done, when the grace of God is released upon them, they will thank you. They will appreciate you. That's what I'm saying. Preachers of the narrow way. Either you preach what the people like, so that you can have the people grow on the other side. That's the growth of cancer. When you are not preaching true gospel and the people are growing, that's cancer. That's cancer growing. The growth of, a, of cancer multiplying itself and damn, damnable growth. But when you preach righteousness and the people are growing, that's healthy growth. That's balanced growth. That is productive growth. So, you want to preach any gospel anyhow. Follow all these big men. Follow all these big men. There's one boy we came across in Portacot. He came from another country as a footballer. Now, when he came to Portacot, a friend told him there's something that works these days. What is it? Ministry. Preaching works. It supplies the money. Ah, how is it? No, there's a place you go and collect power. And then you go and be prophesying to people. You go and be doing miracles. Eh? Is that so? Where? Let's go. And that's how they went. And he said they will form bats. They will be like bats and fly to the ocean. There's a tree there that they all hang there. He said to my surprise, great preachers of this nation. My surprise. Great preachers are among them. Who they say great preachers? Are they preachers of eternal life? Great preacher. He said, ah, so it means God is not, is, is this God living? Is he there really? So what these people are doing is not true. Eh? Ah, this one is also here. God. And God has 
not judge them all this. Then I'm not sure God is alive. Oh, God is not alive. Ah! Eh! When he came across, he listened to the testimony of Sister Linda. He got broken. It's then he knows that judgment is waiting. Judgment is waiting. He became afraid. Eh! Hey, uh, uh, there should be judgment. There should be. So that is, is it the Broadway preachers who want to join? All these occultic ones that are using strange powers, handkerchiefs, aprons, anointing oil, sand, various kinds of things to be, to do miracle. Is it the Thai or the world? Everybody said the world. Jesus Christ came to speak the world. He is the word himself. Preach the word. Only. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Narrow way preacher. Which do you choose? The choice is yours. What about church life and worship? How do we do it? How do you do it? If you want, you can tell your members, lie down. And everybody will lie down. Sit down. Everybody will sit down. You can even say, members, now next Sunday we are worshipping here naked. They will go naked. Have you not heard of the naked church? Uh-uh. If you say, members, next Sunday, this grass here, instead of using cutlass to cut it, which I eat it up, they will come and help you eat it. They are eating it in South Africa. Members, Okay, uh, the, the choice is yours. To do to these people as you want in your ministry. But the judgment is waiting. The curse is waiting. The choice is yours. As a minister of the gospel, to do in whichever way. To fear anybody here. Become afraid. Ah, if I talk to this person, you'll be angry. The choice is what yours to keep Achan here and respect Achan more than Jesus. And Jesus will not be here for the two of them cannot be in one place. No. I am not with Israel anymore because Achan is there. And they so, I mean, Achan is there and has done their cursing. You saw a man doing an accursing and you keep quiet. Okay, I don't want them to be offended. The choice is yours. <laughs> the choice is yours, my brother. Or to stand to this truth. Gospel truth. Gospel truth. And continue with it. The choice is yours. The choice is yours to even come after we have gone. And begin to say another thing. Don't worry. They are from deeper life. Don't bother about it. You know this all thing. You know people have their various ways of... Uh, but God knows how to do our own. You know, God. The choice is yours. To spoil what we're saying now. And say another thing. The people will hear and say, our pastor has said, the matter has finished. Or to stand and say, church, today, this church is born again. We are following a new pattern. The pattern shown to us is the pattern we are moving. This is the end time revival wave. That the God of mercy has raised up, moving around the world and preaching this truth. And God send them here. We stand to it. We get it. We will move by it. If you are ready, stay. If you are not ready, move. We shall grow according to our kind. The God of heaven shall make us grow. There are righteous people who are looking for churches to go to. They enter here, they say, well, this is not a place. They enter here, the Holy Ghost says, no, it's not a place. Why? They're looking for a place holy, sanctified. Ready for the master's use. And the Lord is bringing them. But the choice is yours. To go by the way of righteousness. Or to go by the way of other men. The choice is yours to make. Life is made plain. Behold, I read the last passage and will rise up to pray. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 10 to 15. 1 Corinthians 
chapter 10, chapter 3 rather, verse 10 to verse 15, the Bible says, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another man builded thereon. But let every man take he how he builded thereon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man built upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work, of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he have built thereon, he shall be saved. I mean, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be born, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire. We are working for reward. Eternal reward. If the reward of ministry were earthly, we are of all men most miserable. But it is eternal. It comes from God and not from me. It is immaterial. Yet the God of this earth gives material blessings. How? The Bible says it is determined by your works. Your works. Are you doing broad work? Broad road walk or narrow path walk. Every man's walk shall be tried. The fire shall test every man's walk of what kind it is. If any man's walk endures the fire, he shall receive reward. But if it is burned, he shall suffer loss. Even he himself shall pass through fire, whether he has qualities of eternal life or not. I am very grateful, church, that your pastor has stood for holiness. Has become minded for holiness. I am very grateful. God sent me to support him. God sent me to support him. The decision he takes in righteousness, follow it. You will find eternal life for your soul. Let's rise up upon our feet and bless the Lord. Give thanks to him. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. That you have had a message like this. Something new has happened. Something new. Something good. In Jesus name we pray. Do something new. In my life. My God, do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Oh, do something new. In my life, something new. In my life, something new. In my life, oh Lord, do something new. In my life, something. Can you carry that prayer to God and talk about yourself? Let God do something new in your life. Tell him. You want to go to heaven. Something new must be done. Something new must be done in your life.
Your eyes have opened. Follow, follow the truth now. Follow the truth now. Your eyes have opened. Tell God about what you will do now. How you will live your life now. Promise him. How will you be committing immorality and, and still say you are serving God? Please tell him you are sorry for that. Tell him. Jesus name we pray Amen. my spirit is telling me of people who are ready for the narrow way they are ready they have vowed they will never follow the broad way again if you are there can you rest up your hand I want to pray for you the grace of the Lord will be sufficient for you Satan cannot pull you down for we have been in this way. Yes. You are ready to follow the narrow way. I'm praying for you. God will answer us. In Jesus name we pray. God. You say there are people here who want to follow you. In the narrow path. It's true. Look at them as they have raised up their hands please. As you support us, your children, support them. Amen. You have given us grace and you give us grace every day. Give to them. Amen. Father, they will be strong in the Lord. Amen. They will be a blessing to this church. Amen. They will stand by the pastor. Amen. In Jesus name. We are grateful. May they never be ashamed. Father, give them victory over temptation. Temptation in immorality. Temptation to steal. Temptation to be proud. Or any kind of temptation at all. Let them have the victory over it in Jesus' name. Give them the heart determined to serve the Lord. I bless you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, Father God, I pray for this church. It is love you have shown to this church by granting us the privilege to be hard. Paul said it. I don't want to come to be so hard to you, so behave well. So God, I am asking, this church will enjoy your favor in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, something new will happen here. Amen. A new star. Amen. The people will hear you. Amen. The people will submit to you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Whichever way Satan has been cheating this church, through anybody, man or woman, through any strange power, we quench the power now in the name of Jesus. Let people come up from here to heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. We pray for your servant, the pastor. More grace for him. Amen. More humility upon him. Amen. More hunger and taste for your righteousness. Amen. More fellowship with the righteous people. Amen. Lord, we praise you and thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The presence of the Lord be upon you all. In Jesus' name we pray.
just listening to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiry, contact us on 0813-635-6813 and 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through Him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe
I believe, believe you, believe you are the. Oh, uh-huh. 